Hi, this is Ken Boyd, the owner of Teth, St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our web page at stltest.net. I wanted to go over a question that I just uh, went through with a student that I thought was a tricky one. I always have. And so this is Management Account 10D, which is about markups and cost of sales. Here's a scenario that the student was given. Let's say that you own a company and the inventory is destroyed by fire. And we need to use the accounting records to determine the cost of the inventory, inventory to file an insurance claim. But there's missing information because on the items that you sold, you only have the dollar amount at sale price. You don't have the cost of the inventory sold, which is what you need to do to calculate the cost of your ending inventory. Because after all, that's the amount that was destroyed in the fire. So the solution is to compute the markup on those goods that were sold and remove it so you can get back to the cost of what you sold. So I'm given in the question cost uh, total sales of 350000 That's retail. That's not cost. So step one is let's compute the markup. I know on some other products on the purchases, and I'm going to write that in here. No, I've already got it at the top. I think I'll leave it. So I don't know what the markup is on the sales. I do know on the purchases that I had a cost of two hundred and forty thousand. That has a, it has a retail value of three hundred and twenty five hundred. That amount I'm given, and I'm assuming in the question that the same percent markup on purchases. That's the same percent markup that I have on sales. I have to assume that, or else I have nothing to go on. So if I take Retail in blue, less cost in green. I get a markup in dollars. This is markup in dollars. Of 80500 If I look at that as a percentage of cost, blue divided by green, it's 33.54%, which means for every dollar of cost, I marked it up 33 0.54 or multiplied it by 1.3354 to get the retail value. So if I take 240, multiply it by 1.3354, I get 32500. We're going to see that in a minute. That's step one, using the purchases to compute both a dollar markup and a markup as a percentage of cost. Step two is to use that markup percentage to convert sales into cost. So I know that my sales were 350000 and I'm going to say that X is my cost, and I'm going to solve for X. So if my cost plus 33.54% of my cost equals my retail price, cost in the prior example, 240, plus 33.54% of cost, the markup in dollars equals the retail price of 350,000 in this case. So cost plus markup equals retail. In the purchases example, cost X plus markup 33.54% X equals sales in this example. I add the two X's together, I get 1.3354 X equals 350. And if I take the 350 in blue divided by 1.3354, I get my cost of sales. And I also put or cost of goods sold because both terms mean the same thing. So X is equal to 262.093. The last step is to take cost of sales and compute the ending inventory. So I'm given in the question beginning inventory plus purchases. And another thing that was unclear to the student was included as an inventoryable cost was freight. And the question was, should that be included in inventory? I said, yes, I had to assume that that was an inventoryable cost freight that gets added to inventory. So these three numbers are given beginning inventory plus purchases plus the freight cost. 
The cost of sales I just calculated over here at the right. You can see how those are linked. I'm subtracting my cost of sales and I'm getting my ending inventory, which is again the ending inventory that I'm going to report to the insurance company as my loss when the inventory was destroyed by fire. So once again, situation is we need to calculate our cost of inventory. We do not need to know the cost basis of the items we sold. We compute the markup and then we remove it. So we look at purchases where we're given both cost and retail. We compute a markup in dollars and a percentage markup. We use that percentage to create a formula to come up with cost of sales for the items we sold. And finally, we use cost of sales to compute the ending inventory. We're given beginning inventory purchase and freight. We subtract the cost of sales again that we figured out at the right. I'll scoot that over so you can see the link. In red, I get ending inventory, which is the amount I have to report to the insurance company for my claim. So that's as far as we'll get on management accounting 10D, markups and cost of sales. Remember that. Uh, the accounting all in one book right here is now out, Cost Accounting for Dummies. My second book is now out. I'm working on a third at this moment, the CPA exam for dummies. And also my live course that I did for Creative Live. This is a picture of where you'll find it on the Creative Live site and a picture of the filming, and this is a 12-hour, three-day workshop that I did on small business and QuickBooks. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.